Hello and welcome to this vlog and today we're going to be talking about workflows and workflows with your data. Now what I'm actually talking about is that process that you go through once you've taken the data from your vehicle, you've downloaded it from your device and you start looking at it to be able to find areas of being able to look for improvement. Now for many of us we have a flow and a process that we use so what I was going to do was to take you through what my workflows are so that you can see how I use the software, how I use the data to be able to find improvement in key areas of not only the driver but also the vehicle. Because one of the things that I often see is that people look at their device and for example right here I've got an AIM Solo 2. A lot of people will download the data and then they'll look at it to be able to see is there anything magic that's popping from this data that will help me find some kind of improvement in my lap time. But the reality is, is that a bit of pre-planning and a bit of intent as to what you're looking for from that data will speed up the process by which you actually find improvement. Now, in many respects, uh, there are three aspects to uh, finding improvement that the data can provide. And this varies depending on what kind of system you're using. In this uh, particular instance, I'm using AIM devices, but this would potentially apply to any particular data logger or telemetry that you have access to. And I believe that there are three areas that you can look at. Now, the first is you can look at driver development, and this is being able to find areas of opportunity within the data that help you improve as a driver. Now, in this instance, I would say that any device that exists that logs some form of telemetry will help you with driver development. Then, depending on the type of system you're using, the second is that you're going to be looking at vehicle health. And in this instance, you'll be looking at aspects such as what is the data telling you about how the car is running from temperatures to pressures, um, all the way through to aspects such as the voltage of the battery uh, and how the car's actually running. Now, if you see an issue in this particular data, you might want to act on that first. And so one of the things we'll talk through uh, with these workflows is the order by which we do them and the order by which I do them as we uh, uh, download the data at the track. Now, the third component is something that I'm personally developing over time, and that is how do I use this data for chassis development? And so this is looking at aspects such as is the car making the driver do something or is the driver making the car do something? And is there something in the setup, whether it's suspension all the way through to um, uh, weight distribution or ride height, that you could potentially adjust to be able to make the car easier to drive and then find improvement in that lap time? And so there's lots of things you can do with the data, but one of the things I might add at this particular point is the thing that we don't have at the, ta at the track, I should say, is time. We are time starved in many instances, whether it's running between sessions or the time that we actually have to be able to analyze the data. So having a workflow is really important to be able to speed up how you find that information and then where you go from there. Right, so I'm going to use Race Studio 3 analysis to demonstrate these workflows and I'm going to use a feature called User Profiles. Now don't worry if somebody who hasn't necessarily upgraded to the latest version of the analysis, if you're still using the original Race Studio 2 analysis, you can totally use User Profiles and what I'll do is I'll put a link in the top right hand side where you can actually go uh, and follow a tutorial as to how to use User Profiles in the older software as well. But for today, we're going to have a look at user profiles and how they work into workflows in the new beta software. And I'm going to go through these in a particular order. I'm going to start with vehicle health. Then I'm going to look at driver development. And then I'm also going to have a look at tire pressure. Um, and tire pressure could be, um, uh, for me, it's an area looking at sort of car and chassis development. But if you happen to have other channels, whether it's suspension, for example, or you've got information such as ride height, all sorts of other pieces of data, that's also something that you can feed in here. And so uh, without further ado, let's get into the software. And so here I am in Race Studio 3, and I'm actually going to load up this file right here. And uh, the first thing you're going to see is probably the last um, profile that I was in, but I actually don't want to use this to start with. If you remember, I want to go to vehicle health first. Now, you may be wondering why you're going to use vehicle health first. And the reason is, is that if there's something that's wrong with the car, you want to give either yourself or your engineers or your mechanics as long as possible to be able to fix that between sessions. With driver development, you can look at that at any time between sessions because the next time you're going to potentially be able to act upon your learnings will be the next time you're in the car. So I always start with the thing that will probably take the longest amount of time between sessions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here in this gear icon and you can see there's an area where I can load profile and I've got a profile um, created. 
um, which is the workflow I have for vehicle analysis. So I'm going to click there. And what this is going to do is it's going to load up a page that gives me all sorts of information about the car itself. Now, I'm not going to run through all of these because it'll make this video very long. I've tried to do this a few times now and it's ended up being a very long video. So what I'll actually do is I'll probably run through how I've created these user profiles in later videos because I'm using a combination of things like math channels and status variables and also bring information uh, and, uh, and formats like scatter graphs. But in terms of a quick overview, this allows me to be able to see certain pieces of information that needs to be potentially addressed. And so whether there's uh, issues in terms of RPMs and whether there's been over revs, uh, whether we're in a situation that we're worried about the temperature of the actual um, car itself, whether there's any issues associated with oil pressure. And then I also have a few scatter graphs down here that allow me to be able to see what happened with the oil pressure based upon latitudinal acceleration, which helps me identify, for example, if I'm going around a corner, does the oil slosh around and move away from the pickup point and it has an impact on the overall oil pressure. These give me just a quick overview of vehicle health that if there's anything on here, and this file looks to be pretty good, um, that uh, you know I might be in a position to be able to address these and work through some of these sort of aspects with the mechanics or myself before we actually go out to the next session. Now, the next thing I like to do is to go into my next user profile, which is the next workflow and process that I use, which is looking a bit of driver development. So the next thing I like to do is be able to click on this one that says driver analysis. So I click there and it's going to take me into uh, the user profile that I've created and it'll probably remember the last tab that I was on for my last assessment. So I'm actually going to start this one with time distance. And this is the measures graph that many of us are very familiar with that allows us to be able to see what's happening with the data. And the way I've got it set it up is that I have it, uh, and you may have seen other videos or tutorials from me, I have it set up in terms of speed, then what the driver's doing here. And if I go in here and I select a lap, and I pick one, this is a 104.6, so I'll probably pick this 104.6 here to compare. Then I get the time compare bar and I can see what's happening on that lap to be able to see what's happening and what's being done. And so I can see here, for example, that uh, even though these two lap times are almost identical, at a certain point uh, through the lap, you can see that uh, I was up almost two tenths of a second and then lost it at the end of the lap. So I can go in and analyze and see what I'm doing. To further sort of compound that, I can actually double click into certain areas. Uh, for example, if I double click here into the cops corner, I can see that the blue lap does a better run coming out of that corner by carrying more speed. And so you can see that in this instance, um, it goes from being a little bit faster on the way in the red lap to being slower on the way out. And that could be a situation of fast in, slow out. But now what I can do is I can also click on track and I can see if there's any information associated with line going into that particular corner. Um, and I can also see um, sort of information such as, you know, trending analysis. Then I usually look at the split times report to be able to give me an idea based on these segments, what my theoretical best lap would be is if I put it all together. And then finally, if I really want to dig into a certain area and have a look at what the driver is doing, I can also have a look here and use the Smarty Cam file that I have to be able to see if there's additional information that I can glean by looking at what's happening on the track and seeing if I'm driving differently through that particular corner. And so this gives me a little bit of sort of driver development information. And there may be a few things that I'm doing as a driver, which may be prompted by the car. So the third element of the workflow is to be able to go in and actually have a look at some aspects of vehicle chassis. Now I don't have sensors on my car yet, something I'm gonna develop this year that gives me information like suspension travel, but I do have information such as tire analysis. And so I can go in here, click on load profile, click on this one that says, for example, tire analysis. And then this just gives me some information associated with how the car is performed and how the tires are performing through the actual session. And again, I won't go into too much detail as to what's being said here. And I'll actually put another link um, in this video, top right hand side, that talks about tire pressure analysis. But this will also help you understand what I'm actually looking at here on track. And so you can see that I've got all sorts of information, whether it's the pressures of the tires over the uh, longevity of the uh, the session itself, I can see what it's having an impact in terms of lateral um, acceleration. This is particularly useful if I want to be able to say which are giving me the most amount of grip. And I've got that graphically represented down here as well. So all sorts of information that I can see. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is that all it is is an absolute sort of, oh, it's not absolute, but a very quick click of the button here and I can move to driver analysis and it's as, as fast as that. I can go and look at vehicle health, um, it's as fast as that. And so a very sort of easy way of being able to work through your data. 
Right, now many of you may be saying, well, this is all well and good, James. Um, if you've got all of those sensors, you've got your tire pressure analysis, you've got your oil pressure, you've got your RPMs. But what if I'm using, for example, something like this, just a straightforward AIM Solo 2, and you want to be able to create a workflow for you? Well, the reality is, is that driver development is available, as we discussed, from any device that's there, and an AIM Solo 2 is no different. In fact, what's interesting is, is that the beauty of some of the data that comes from an AIM Solo 2 comes from all devices. And so as GPS is the lowest common denominator, you can analyze any file. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch back to Ray Studio uh, 3 analysis again, is we're going to open up a file. You can see I've got one here. It's exactly the same session um, as we have here. You can see that uh, this one says Solo 2. So I'm going to load this one up and we're going to see different information. But just to confirm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this gear icon. I'm going to go down to load profile and I'm going to click on driver analysis GPS only. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to the start point. And instead of having all of the channels that have been set up to be able to analyze driver development using what the driver is doing in terms of throttle and brake uh, analysis, I'm going to use what we can get from GPS. So you can see here I've got all the uh, information set up, but I'm actually going to click here on laps and I'm going to pick that same 104.6 that I looked at earlier on. And you can see instead of seeing the data uh, associated with, uh, for example, uh, my actual inputs, we're using now an analysis and some math channels that are available in the software to be able to see what the driver is doing here. So you can see that I've still got all the information I need in terms of what's happening with speed, uh, but instead of seeing um, brake, I've got this uh, brake on and TPS or throttle position on. It gives me an idea of what the driver is doing. So you can see that um, the reason that there's probably more speed being carried through this corner is you can see that the throttle was on here, but not on here. And this means that the red lap starts to slow against the blue lap because the blue lap carries more speed through that corner. And so you can see this using GPS only. So please don't fear that if you've only got a GPS device that somehow there isn't a workflow that's associated with you. You can still get the same information. You can still do the same analysis based upon um, what's happening on track. And you can still do the same split times analysis report that gives you your theoretical BAS time and all the information there. And so in many respects, uh, a workflow is something that is applicable regardless of what kind of device you have. And depending on what kind of device you have, you will work through those uh, you know, different workflows to get the information you need, which I think is of particular importance. So I'm going to finish off this video with a very important concept, which is, well, what are you going to do about it? It's one of those things that looking at the data is nice. Looking at the data sort of gives you a sense of, oh, well, I could have done this better and I could have done that better. But the question is going to be, what are you going to do about it? And why are you analyzing the data in the first place? Now, I would argue that if you're going into downloading that data and looking at it thinking, you know what, this is what I want to get out of the data and this is what I'm looking for, that's really important. But the key component is going to be, well, what are you going to do about it afterwards? And so I was always taught at racing school, what are the three things you're going to take with you when you go out on track the next time? Are you going to brake later? Are you going to take a different line? Are you going to um, sort of be more consistent on the throttle? Whatever your particular thing is that you're going to do, the key component once you've analyzed this data is making sure you do something about it. I hope this video was useful for you and that these workflows make sense. It's something that uh, I found has sped up my analysis of data very quickly at, uh, at the track, gives me the information that I need when I need it so that I can make better and more informed choices as to things like um, tire pressures, for example, or making sure that I'm being more consistent uh, when I'm analyzing my data. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be lovely. Uh, we're going to be putting videos out all year. So uh, if you subscribe, you'll see them uh, as they come out. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching this video uh, and good luck at the track.